Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TIDL, your source for information on teams and players going to the International Five, whether you're the type that doesn't know about esports at all, or the type that stays all night drafting up fantasy teams. This week, we take a look at the masters of espionage themselves, Team Secret. Ah, uh, fantasy leagues. Perhaps you've never heard of them before because you're not a nerd like Hotbit. The concept is simple, take an imaginary team from your favorite players and have them fight against the rest of the scene to take it all. But what if it wasn't just a virtual concept? What if you could take all the top players, the VIPs, and put them all in one team together, forming a kick-ass super squad the likes of which no one has ever seen before? Well, it turns out you can, and they did. Their name is Team Secret. When people think about Dota 2 teams, they tend to picture the players, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Dota 2 hotshot teams are typically part of organizations, organizations which span several different games using their exposure to spread their various brands. All in all, the players typically have little say in what happens. They are paid to do their job, and they are paid to win. Par for the course for many, it's the way it has always been. Or at least it was, until some players decided to go rogue. Team Secret was formed on a simple idea. What if the players were the bosses? What if they could play whoever they wanted, whatever they wanted, with no masters to serve, no targets to fulfill, but their own. A collection of the best players from each team who were sick of being told what to do and how to do it, who wanted to play by their own rules. No one really knows who came up with the idea originally for the team. Some say that it's a secret. Uh... Some credit Kuroki and No-Tail, whose mutual respect led to the two discussing with one another the possibility of forming their own team. Others credit Puppy, who had expressed interest in working with S4, holding himself responsible for his TI3 defeat. And still others believe that it was a ploy by RTZ and Zai to give Charlie a heart attack and collect his will money, having planned the formation of secret months before even joining them. Okay, nobody thinks that but me, but still. Whoever came up with the idea first, the plan was risky. To give up a spot on some of the most well-funded and well-respected teams like Navi, Alliance, and Fnatic in order to become basically a rogue agent that could end in total disaster. They could be blacklisted by the organizations they abandoned. They could be tracked down by assassins or by their former teammates, and they could be mocked by the community at large if they failed. It was simple. Pull out the insane plan with all the cash and fame going directly to the players, or fail and lose everything. But they managed to win it all. It took a few swaps in the roster early on and going into hiding to train with their latest recruits, but they blazed out on the scene as a simply unstoppable force, with a 15-0 win streak against all of the best teams in the world leading up to the DAC group stages. Team Secret became a scene powerhouse. No sponsor, no organization, nothing but raw skill, years of experience, and an assortment of heroes that even the Marvel Avengers could respect. Teams were torn apart, colors were shed, and Twitch chat memes were born, but everybody agreed that the VIPs of the Dota 2 world became the squad that everyone learned to fear. It was a goddamn beatdown a secret place highly in almost every tournament they participated in since their founding. The secret to Team Secret is that they play like no other team, because they have players with backgrounds of the most successful teams in the history of Dota. Every single player has been to an international, two of which have won. These boys are seasoned agents, lean, mean, and licensed to be killing machines. They are unique in almost every way. They play aggressively to control the map, but at the same time don't necessarily go for kills, instead equalizing the farm evenly between the supports and the carries. Why? Because there is no weak link on Team Secret. They know that every member of the team are experienced and effective in their positions. They refuse to practice against other teams and opt instead to go blind against random opponents and ranked matchmaking. Why? They believe that practicing against other teams would be more beneficial to their enemies rather than themselves. So far, it seems like their strange strategies have been working out. There is a common saying for those who face off against Team Secret, if you make a mistake, you lose. Secret is unparalleled in objective gaming. When they win a fight, no matter what time in the game it is, no matter where they are on the map, they will make you pay for it. They will make Roshan hand over the Aegis. They will crack your racks and have them fall to pieces. They will make you regret loading into the game and daring to oppose them. One poor play, and that's the game. If you can't play perfectly, you can't play against Secret. Now, just to be clear, this is a team that would be created by a Dota 2 supervillain. Their main investor is a Turkish oil and shipbuilding magnate's son who signed on to be the director of the team. To further my point of his insanity, he was also one of the top players in Clash of Clans. All the players left teams that they were basically the poster boys for and left the fans in a void. One of the most celebrated and dedicated players in the world is their coach! Their fucking coach! Unrelenting, unpredictable, and unbeatable. Team Secret is the team that shook up the Dota 2 world and continues to stir it to this very day. Now let's take a look at these rogue agents themselves. Known commonly as Baby Rage, Arteezy is known for his insane outbursts, both on Twitter and in the game. He is brash, unpredictable, and has an affinity for alcohol and insane behavior. He also is, unquestionably, one of the best mid players in the world. For every Twitter outburst or destroyed door, Arteezy matches with unparalleled skill, intelligence, and brutality in the field of battle. He is widely regarded as one of the best North American players in the world today, despite him starting off on a team called We Watch Chinese Dota and being considered the worst member of that team when they started. Eventually, Arteezy made his big break as a stand-in for Bone 7 at MLG Columbus 2013 with Speed Gaming. Arteezy, a relatively unknown mid player at the time, faced off against the world's best, including Dendi and Mushi, and he completely trashed them. The scene was shocked to see an NA pub star destroy pro players one to one, and he soon became a fan favorite. Well, everybody liked the fucking man who wrote this infamous review on his performance. 
Whoopsie. Two months later, Arteza gathered up his NA Dota brothers Fear and Universe and formed a team with two new hot players, PPD and Zai, to create the team Sad Boys, a rip on the Blog Boys meme at the time. After winning nearly all their matches after forming 16 out of 18 in 20 days, they were picked up by evil geniuses less than one month after they formed. EG became one of the best teams in the world, and many would attribute their success to be on the back of their insane but extremely effective mid Arteezy. Suffice it to say, Arteezy was the face of evil geniuses. And then he fucked them. Nah, not really. But after Team Secret's early roster shuffle and growing tensions between himself and his team, Arteezy flipped the Western scene on its head. By leaving the team, he had a hand in forming for the chance to play by his own rules again. So much tribute this to the growth of EG as a team and the emphasis on teamwork they had begun to demand. Arteezy doesn't care about teamwork. Arteezy is a killer. Arteezy is the kind of guy who denies all of your last hits before he kills you just to make fun of you. And Arteezy wants to 1v1 solo mid the best players in the world and shit all over him, then down an entire bottle of Jack Daniels and tackles somebody. He is a beast but he's one of the best. People started posting copy-pasted paragraphs asking him how to play Ricky in order to backstab the people that loved him the most. The community had shunned him. Not until he started absolutely obliterating anybody who played against Team Secret. It is hard to stay mad at a guy for doing what he is passionate about. And for Arteezy, he is passionate about brutally murdering any idiot who dares stand in his lane. I mean, who can stay mad at this face? All in all, this game has been, and continues to be, a little too easy for Arteezy. But Arteezy wasn't the only person to leave EG for Secret, as his departure was a package deal. He refused to quit EG without his better half, the talented, dedicated offlaner and support Zai. As previously mentioned, Zai transitioned from Honda Dota along with PPD to join Sad Boys in its inception, and it was there that he met Arteezy for the first time. The two work exceptionally well together. Zai's training as an offlaner and a support fit perfectly with Arteezy's hyper-aggressive style. Where Arteezy goes, Zai follows, and the two would commonly run up to multiple enemies alone and make it out alive. They were the perfect team, and they refused to break it up. Zai is world-renowned not only for his supporting and offlaning, but for his beauty. Many compare him to Beethoven, but none can deny the beauty that is Zai. Even my very own girlfriend has a crush on him, forcing him to sign the back of the only picture I have of her in my wallet until she found out he was 17 and then she moved on to fear. Really? Jesus. Recently, Zai has said that his favorite esport is actually Street Fighter 4, which he does indeed kick ass at, but it's still Street Fighter 4. Anyway, Zai is most well known not for his support or his offlane skill, but rather for paving the way for female professionals in Dota 2. As one of the most skilled players in the world and also the only girl in professional Dota 2 esports, Zai destroys stereotypes and helps us remember that in the end, we are all equals. Kuroki is one of the most experienced members of Team Secret and is their wildcard player, knowing how to support, carry, or be a utility, whatever that means, when the team needs it most. Kuroki started off in Dota 1, but moved to Dota 2 just in time for the first international in 2011 with Gosu Gamers. After failing to win, Kuro went on to many different teams, typically being the star player in every team he joined. He was so good, in fact, that after he was eliminated from the qualifiers at TI2 by Mouse Sports, he was asked to be a stand-in for Mouse Sports, due to one of their players come with me not being able to attend. You know you're a good player when the team that just beats you asks you to be a stand-in for them as their star player. Eventually, Kuro was picked up by Team Navi in 2013, making it to his third international with them, and finally picking up a second place win. He returned to TI4 with Navi one final time before his unexpected move to Team Secret. Suffice it to say, Kuro has been to every international, has been everywhere in the Dota 2 scene in general. This experience may have been what prompted him to be the original founder of the Team Secret along with No Tail. You see, no matter what Team Kuro had ever been on, he was always treated as the star carry player, and many teams' entire playstyles revolved around making sure that he was safe. Team Secret instead allowed Kuro to expand and flourish, as he no longer needed to care about anyone else on his team. For once, he had finally found a group of equals. Crow is so impressed by his teammates that he has recently switched over to be the support role, despite being one of the most renowned carry players since Dota 1. Crow is on the quiet side, but he is a mastermind. He created the powerhouse that is Team Secret, and you can bet that he pulls some of the strings from the inside. Puppy. Just saying the name carries weight. Puppy is, and will forever be, one of the most interesting and unique players to ever grace the stage of the Dota 2 scene. Where to begin? Puppy is world renowned as one of the best thinkers in Dota, famous for his experimental style. Personable, highly intelligent, and one of the most quoted people in Dota 2 history, Puppy is famous for not- And the pods. Was that Fanal? No, that was Puppy this time. Huh? Not being just one of the most prolific captains in Dota 2 history, but being the voice for the Dota 2 professional player in general. He is careful with his words, but talks often and openly. He is unpredictable, typically experimenting mid-tournament and taking risks no one else would want to take, yet they still pay off. To Puppy, there is no meta. There are no common strategies. Every single game is a new one, and he treats them all differently. Puppy's long and sword career began back in the early days of Dota 1, playing for a variety of teams. In 2009, he played for DreamHack Tournament as a stand-in for Mouse, where he met his longtime friend Kuroki for the first time. After many games together, Kuroki and Puppy decided that they wanted to work towards something new and create the best gank team in history. He took the role of captain onto his team to implement his plan and defeat the 4 Protect 1 farming Dota. He continued to perfect his aggressive playstyle along with Goro for over a year before finally taking a risky leap to the newly formed squad Nabi. Nabi took Puppy's unique style and made it their own and Puppy's dream of a hyper-aggressive gank team was 
finally close to being realized just in time for the first international. Now we got their Dota 2 beta keys three weeks before TI won, and Puppy still led them to an incredible victory. It was he that created the Chen Pudge trick that won them the critical games at TI3 as well. Puppy always seems to know what is coming before anyone else does, and always seems to implement his plans at the perfect moment. His most recent plan, of course, being Team Secret. Puppy was, for all intents and purposes, one of the faces of Not Be. While Denny may have had the personality and skill, Puppy had the brains and the plans. Yet he was always irked at the need to speak Russian on the team, and had always longed to return to his glory days with his good friend Kuro. While advocating for players' rights and the need for agents, Puppy was ready to not only be the captain of a team, but wanted to start a revolution in the scene. A week after his contract ended with Na'Vi, he left to form Team Secret along with Kuro. Puppy had always wanted to play with his friend Snowtail and Kuro again, but also wanted to play with his very respected rival S4, and form a hand-picked team of people he saw talented. After all this time, he had finally done it. He had changed the face of Dota 2 forever eight years after he started. He built the perfect gank team. There's not enough room in this video, or in any video really, to paint a clear picture of the mastery of Puppy's mind. He infiltrated the Russians to learn their secrets. He created a new meta both in-game and in the scene, and he is one of the most successful captains in Dota 2 history. Instead, I'll let him speak for himself, summing up the playstyle of Team Secret. Everyone must forget the words carry, support, and ganker. This is all rubbish. If you want to be useful to win the game, you must play on all heroes instead of crying like a baby when you have to play carry. That quote was made three years ago. Finally, we get to S4. Oh boy. Arteezy is known to the world as one of the best mids. Kuroki was known as the best carry, Puppy the best captain, and Zai the prettiest girl. S4 is literally the best at everything. To begin, let's list off all of his awards and victories. Motherfucker is the best at all things. Everyone else from Team Secret are buddies from huge teams. Ar Arteezy and Zai worked together well and came from EG. Puppy and Kuro had the dream and came from Navi. Yet S4 is a lone wolf from Team Alliance, and he is the pro that other pros sought out and begged to be on their team. The best players in the world gave up everything just for the chance to play with S4. Why? Because he is the best. Period. Most known for his insane Puck and Magnus skills, S4 dominates the battlefield with an unparalleled amount of control. His last name translates to Son of Magnus. This motherfucker was literally destined to be the best Magnus player in the world. And he is. Despite Arteezy being world renowned for his mid skills, the team gives S4 the mid because of his ability to dominate the entire map and make plays as soon as he reaches level 6. All in all, S4 commands the field like a seasoned vet and is seemingly unstoppable. Even Ice Frog had to make changes to try to stop him, directly nerfing the Haste Rune after witnessing S4's masterful plays with it and nerfing all of his signature heroes after the Summit 3 this year. It would not be a stretch to say that S4 single handedly won TI3 for Alliance with his million dollar dream coils. Trying to describe it with words will never do it justice. Just take a look. But they flipped it at four. He just bought back. If he dies, that could be game. Blinks away. They take the wreck. All TP. TP quick right now. S4 is going to try to cancel as many as possible. Yo, cancel three. My god. Oh my god. Alliance. They're deleted. The alliance is deleted. They don't have enough damage. They don't have enough time. Four. Oh, cancel four. TP. He's oh. He canceled the beam. Puppy. Puppy is not going to be back He's in the base. He's got BKBs, but no boots of travel. Coil on oh, two. Cancel Sandy's TP as well. Now they are fight in it, huge fight it, fight. Now, if they go for the throne, it could be game. Funix down. Alliance are doing it. They need a little more for those to fall. So they want do this it. throne. They're going to do it. They're going to the do it. The Alliance wins. They the win TI3. That clip right there, in essence, is S4, the pro that pros dream of playing with. When taking the big risk to join Team Secret, S4 was quoted as saying, We expect to win every single LAN. And for the last four months, and for all of 6.84, they have. The next LAN to win is TI5. But who is pulling the strings behind this mysterious Team Secret? Some say the players themselves, but while they came up with a desire, there is clearly a puppeteer behind the scenes. A whispering voice in the ears of players and people in the scene alike. A man in the shadows. Team Secret's mysterious manager, Cyborg Matt. Who is Cyborg Matt? Some say he began as a hacker. Others say he began as a fan. Some even believe him to be Ice Frog himself. With humble beginnings coming through every line of code Valve has released for Dota 2 and updates, Matt made a career out of knowing Dota from literally the inside out. He knows the game better than Summit Valve and has seemingly unlimited knowledge about the game and the scene at large. He mastered the workshop with one of the most highly purchased couriers in history. He mastered the internet, going from forum lurker to website owner to direct invitee to the international itself. Now, seemingly from behind the shadows, he begins his quest to master the Dota 2 scene at large. Matt has always been tied to Team Secret, but what is his official role? No one really knows. Also, 1473 is their coach, but I'm sick of this fucking movie already. It's too long. Sorry, Thiepen, but I'm done. Jesus. But hey, thanks for watching TIDL episode four. And I hope to see you again on the internet land and see you in person at TI5. Follow your dreams. 